Our episode starts with a cop checking out a street full of prostitutes. He invites one into his car and takes her to what seems to be a hog pen in the back alley somewhere. As she stands and waits, she's attacked by a vampire while the cop goes through her purse for money. We then go to the inside of a car where a guy is blindfolded. It's hinted at that the people in the car are vampires headed by a guy named Marcus, and the blindfolded guy believes he's going to be turned. When they get to the location, Marcus tells him that he's gotten nosy and instead of turning him, Marcus shoots him in the head. Fast forward to the daytime and a woman is getting out of a cab. Her mother comes out extremely happy to see her and when she gets inside she's met by her large family having a welcome home party for her. The girl asks where her brother Zach is and they tell her he just got arrested and they need to have a talk with him followed by the mother getting frustrated that the girl always defends her brother's actions. Just then the doorbell rings as the police. Inform everyone that there was a shooting and take the girl down to the station to identify his body, which ends up being the guy from the previous scene and the cop showing the body is the one who fed the prostitute to the vampire earlier. The girl notices a weird symbol on his neck and when she asks about it, the cop dismisses it as a gang sign, but she swears to him he was not in a gang. Fast forward and we see her at her brother's grave. She makes a phone call to the detective, but gets a voicemail. She then heads to his apartment to investigate and as she does, she finds she's not alone. When she chases after the person, it ends up being Blade. She gets freaked out when, as she follows him, the next place she sees him is somehow on a roof. She cuts herself during the chase and Blade begins to fang out at the smell of her blood. The girl then heads to the police station and tries to explain to the crooked detective the situation and once again he blows her off. After trying to convince him that she was an army sergeant and can help, to no reaction, she walks off and proceeds to pull the fire alarm. When the building evacuates, she heads to his office and takes her brother's file. Back at Blades, we see him injecting himself with a serum meant to hold his vampire side back. He tells his partner Shin that he would rather use an inhaler instead of the injections, which seems to be very painful to use. We then find out that head vampire Marcus is some big wig legitimate businessman in the city, so they have to be careful how they approach going after him. Back with Zack's sister Krista, she heads to an arcade and beats up some guy who knew her brother. She doesn't get much info out of him, but notices he has a similar tattoo as him. As the guy runs off, she picks up a vial he drops. Meanwhile, the guy calls someone and lets them know that she might be a problem. After she gets to his place, she begins googling the tattoo and the vial, leading her to some professor who runs an occult website. As she takes off to find him, we see Blade is following her. After passing his test to make sure she isn't marked, the guy lets her into his home. He tells her the stuff is vampire ash, and if you inhale it, it gives you temporary superpowers, and is sold as a drug on the street. She of course doesn't believe him. He begins to explain to her that the tattoos belong to humans who pledge themselves to vampires in hopes of getting turned. When he shows her that he has proof, she freaks and runs at the sight. After leaving the professor's house, she gets rear-ended driving. She goes to the other car and no one is in it, but it was only a distraction to steal her car. She then hears whispering about her brother being killed. She heads in a rundown building just to be jumped by a group of vampires. She attempts to shoot one, but it does nothing but anger him, but is saved just in time by Blade. He then tells her to get out of the city as quickly as possible, and then disappears. After that, she heads back to the professor, where she asks him to explain to her who Blade is. He gives her basically a recap of the Wesley Snipes film, including footage, and explains to her how he's half human, half vampire. He tells her that he was friends with Abraham Whistler, who was Blade's handler in the films. She asks where she can find him, and he gives her the last known address for him that he knew. As she heads back there, Blade finds and confronts her. He tells her she needs to leave the city, but she tells him she's going after the ones who killed her brother, and she's going to do it with or without his help. Somewhere else, we see Marcus at a lab where they're performing experiments on vampires, basically torturing them to see if injections meant to make them immune to things that vampires are weak to work, which they aren't. Blade takes Krista back to the hideout where they decide to use her as a decoy. They want her to seduce Marcus long enough to put a tracker on him during an art gallery opening. She arrives, and before she can place the tracker on him, his blonde female companion runs interference. She then smooth talks him into having a conversation with her about the city of Detroit. As she tries to flirt, he reveals to her that he knows who she is, and tells her about how sad her brother was as a person and how the world is better off without him. She says screw the plan and heads out, turns her body cam off, then takes some gear to the roof across the street, and Blade heads off to try to save her. She has one of the gallery workers hand Marcus an earpiece so that she can taunt him while she aims at him with a sniper rifle, which is clearly dumb as he then tracks down where she is and keeps her talking, giving his companion enough time to rappel down to her and knock her out. Uh. Uh. 
By the time Blade gets there, she's gone and there's nothing left but her equipment. Krista eventually wakes up tied up in a candlelit room full of vampires. Marcus informs her that he sees her much different than he saw her brother, and much to this may of his female companion Chase, who warns him he needs permission, he proceeds to turn her by injecting her with a needle. After she loses consciousness, Marcus tells her that all she needs to do is die before throwing her lifeless body off the roof of the building. Krista dreams that she's chasing her twin brother Zack around the park. He's saying something to her, but she can't understand. She then ends up at the bank of a river where she sees vampire natives eating settlers and torturing what looks to be Marcus. She then wakes up in a body bag on a corner slab. As security walks in, he sees her on the ceiling. She pounces on the security guard and fangs out, but then chooses to run. As she makes it outside, Marcus is there to greet her and welcome her to the family. She then informs Blade about the morgue incident and tries to convince him she needs to be staked. Blade tells him that he is going to try to save her with the serum instead. Back at Marcus's, Krista wakes up in a sexy black gown. Marcus then says some random poetic sounding stuff about feeling more things while the rest of us watch the leg fetish scene play out of her putting on some heels. He tries to bond with her over her seeing how he was turned, but she fangs out at him, upset at what he did to her. Marcus then asks Chase to take Krista under her wing, which he is not fond of. She tells him that the board will get mad when they find out he turns someone without their permission, resulting in him snapping at her, which she seems to like as she flashes her fangs. Chase takes Krista on a ride along, where she shows her how to read glyphs and gives her a drink of blood from a bag. Krista asks a bunch of questions and Chase seductively answers them, including revealing that her husband and not Marcus was the vampire that turned her in the 1940s. Meanwhile, Marcus reprimands the detective for overfeeding his test subjects with prostitutes. He brings him into the warehouse where he's told it's time to cut bait and he wants the detective to be Krista's first kill and tempts her with his blood, figuring since she already hates him, it should be easy. He leaves her with the detective while he goes to check out his experiments. Blade arrives just in time to watch her feeding on the detective. He makes short work of the vampires in the hallway, who distract him long enough for Krista to escape. While this is happening, Marcus's bodyguard Fritz takes the latest dose of the vampire invincibility serum and goes after Blade. They have a knockdown drag out fight that ends when Marcus calls Fritz off after seeing that the vampire serum worked as Blade couldn't kill him using all his normal methods. Blade then takes off into the holding area for the test subjects where he's ambushed by Krista and Chase. He has Shin use a sonic mirror to slow down the vampires while he grabs Krista and gives her the hunger suppression serum and takes off. Back at Marcus's, he compliments Krista on the job she did. She asks him about the visions of her brother during her transformation and he lets her know that her brother was trying to show her something. Marcus is then summoned to see the purebloods. We then see that Blade went back to the warehouse during the day just to find all signs of the vampires were gone. After Marcus left for his meeting, Krista uses her new vampire powers to escape out the penthouse window. She heads to her brother's grave, where Blade gives her a box of a bloodlust suppression serum. He lets her know that her brother was actually working for him as an insider and not a vampire flunky, and that she could do the same now that she's one of them as long as she takes the serum twice a day. When she walks away, Blade and Shin discuss whether they think she'll join them or not. The last thing we see in the episode is the crooked detective waking up as a vampire, but just as he starts to laugh thinking of his new powers, they start hooking him up showing that he's being used as one of Marx's test subjects. Thanks for watching. If you like this content, please leave a like and subscribe and hit the bell icon to know every time I update. If you want to help my channel grow, please check out my Patreon where you can get access to content early as well as see the content that can't be uploaded here on YouTube. Link will be in the description. Until next time.